Hi there, my name's Simon Drew, and I'd like to welcome you to the Practical Stoic Podcast, where I give you practical Stoic advice for modern times. If you'd like to learn more about Stoicism, or if you want some added inspiration in your day, just go to my website. It's risetothegoodlife.com. If you're interested in transforming your life with Stoic principles, then I also offer one-on-one coaching. To book your first free session, just head to risetothegoodlife.com forward slash coaching and follow the links. But for now, enjoy this episode. Hi there, my name's Simon Drew and welcome to the Practical Stoic Podcast. You know, when you study philosophy, it tends to flow over into every single area of your life. You know, if you're practicing Stoicism, you'll probably find that it helps you with your relationships, with your career, with your levels of happiness, your levels of anxiety, with your health, all these different areas. And this week, I've been thinking about how Stoicism can improve or add to your parenting methods. And, you know, I'm not a parent myself, but I would like to be a parent one day. And so I wanted to hear from the parents within our Stoic community, and I wanted to know from them how Stoicism has influenced the way that they interact with their children. And so I'll dive in straight away with our first answer, and it comes from Leo, who said, As the Stoics say, actions speak louder than words. My children are exposed to my early risings, daily exercise rituals, my bookcase bulging with books on Stoicism, and podcasts. Every Wednesday, my children get a thrill when I play your weekly podcast and my name is mentioned. This leads them to asking me about Stoicism, and as they are still quite young, I try to throw in a little bite-sized chunk every now and then. Overall, I believe that I'm a more tolerant, present, and calm person because of Stoicism, and that hopefully rubs off on my kids, fate permitting. So Leo, thank you so much for your answer, and if your kids are listening to this, then I'll do a shout out to them. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast, kids, and I hope you're enjoying it. And moving on, the next answer came from Danny, and he said, Honestly, the main thing is that it helps me to remain calm and respond correctly instead of just reacting. Right now, we're about to head to the emergency room because my two sons were playing, and one of them pulled on his arms in an odd way. We believe that his elbow may be dislocated. Freaking out is just not effective, so I remained calm and it helped to calm them down. My wife also pointed out that now we try to look at these situations as opportunities. This is exactly what we needed right now. This is our opportunity to put these things into practice. It doesn't make the situation any better, but it's comforting to know that we didn't make the situation worse by reacting to it poorly. Danny, thank you so much for that response, and I'll take this opportunity to let everybody know that Danny, Danny Vega, is actually our guest on Friday for the interview podcast, and uh, Danny is actually the co-host of the Ketogenic Athlete podcast, and he's also, as you know, a regular contributor to this podcast, and uh, so anybody who is in the Ketovangelist group on Facebook and the community online You'll be very excited to hear Danny in our interview on Friday. It was really great to talk to him, so I'm excited that you guys get to listen to that soon. But anyway, moving on, the next answer came from Eric, and he said, As a parent, your first instincts are to protect your child of any suffering. Also, you want the best for them. And in a meritocracy, this means that you want them to be the best. Initially, we believe that a life devoid of pain and full of good things is a happy life. Stoicism allows us to concentrate on a much more realistic and empowering educational goal of building resilience with our children. So Eric, thank you so much for that response. I think this is a great point that you bring up here, which is that life isn't supposed to be all easy, and that would actually not be a happy life if everything was easy. We need to have this resilience, we need to be stronger and always be looking to be better people. And uh, I love that you're doing that with your children, so thank you for that response. And next, we had a response from Duncan, who said, I feel as though the concept of memento mori really influences my relationship with my seven-year-old son. Treasuring every moment and being mindful of his development, I make sure that he feels safe and loved every day. I also try to model healthy behavior through stoic practice. I have no idea how long I have in this life, so I want to be a positive figure for him in every moment. 
So, Duncan, thank you so much for that answer. You know, I think this is a great point that you bring up. You know, kids are not always going to be kids. So, while they're young and, you know, this is a special time, you've got to make the most of it. And having that idea of memento mori constantly on your mind is a great reminder to have that you really need to be spending the most time with your children as possible and making every moment count. So, thank you for that response. And next, we had an answer from Cheryl, and she said, I often use stoicism as a teaching tool with my 13-year-old daughter. For her age, so much weight can be placed on what other people think and do. There are so many teachings in stoicism to remind her that other people's thoughts and opinions only affect you if you allow them to. When she tells me about something that somebody said that was hurtful, I often ask her, how does it really affect you? I do find that it lands a lot better to have it come from someone else than to just have it be my own opinion. Strangely, Marcus Aurelius carries more weight than me. It helps me to teach my daughter the use of good ethics and virtue, in that we always are in charge of how we deal with a situation. You should do the right thing even if it's hard at the time, rather than being weak in the moment and going with the flow, only to regret it later and to have to keep on reliving the situation. Doing the right thing might be the more difficult choice, especially at first, but you're unlikely to keep on revisiting a problem once you have had the tough conversations. These words from Epictetus could have been written solely for teenagers. Quote, Try to influence your friends to speak appropriately by your example. If you find yourself in unfamiliar company, however, keep quiet. End quote. So Cheryl, thank you so much for that. I appreciate your input. And I love this point that you're, you know, you're really trying to instill within your daughter this love of virtue and making the right decision in the moment. And that's such a great thing to teach anyone that the right decision is not always going to be the easier decision. In fact, most of the time, it's going to be the harder decision, but it is the better decision to make. So I really love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And next we had M who said, When I am calm, my daughter is calm as well. And this is the first step for proper and clean communication. I cannot teach her how to live her life. That will be her challenge. All I can do is to be a living example with my own. So, Em, I think that's such a good point there. You know, you can't really show a kid how to live their life because they're going to do what they want to do. But what you can do is be the best possible example for them. And in doing that, hopefully they will want to be more like you and they'll want to even exceed that positive example that they've seen growing up. So I thank you for sharing that message. And next we had Carl who said, Being a stoic parent helps prevent me from being frustrated when my son doesn't behave like I would like. If he's in a mood where I know he's going to misbehave, I don't take him to places where that would frustrate me. When he's not doing what he is told to do, I simply ask myself, is he behaving as you would expect a five-year-old to act? If so, then why are you getting wound up? When he's really pushing my buttons, I do negative visualization and ask myself how I would react in this situation if I knew he would be gone soon. So, Carl, thank you so much for that. I appreciate your answer, and I appreciate the point that you bring up of really understanding that this is how a five-year-old is probably meant to act. This is how they act. It's just what a five-year-old does. And so it allows you to come to terms with that fact and to enjoy the moments more and to not get so wound up when your kid does misbehave because it's just going to happen. So I know that that will really be so helpful for a lot of parents. So I appreciate that answer. And moving on, we had an answer from Chris who said, I try to talk to my four-year-old son frequently about what is in and out of his control. It is the main conversation we have after he has had a tantrum about something. Also, out of my control is what I tell myself while he is in mid-tantrum. So thank you so much for that answer, Chris. You know, I think that the dichotomy of control is one of the most important principles that can be taught to any person, whether they're young or old, because the effects that it can have in your life are so profound and so amazing. Why wouldn't you want to be teaching this to everybody? And it's such a simple principle to learn. So I appreciate you telling us that. And absolutely, if you're a parent, I would encourage you to be teaching your kids about the power of understanding what you can control and what you can't and focusing on what you can control. And so next we have an answer from Jason who said, I think one of the main goals of parenting in general is to set up your children to be better than you are. Having said that, since I was introduced to Stoicism, I feel like I'm a much better person, 
especially in terms of patience. Most of my life, I was a hothead. I'm already trying to install the notion in my nine-year-old that you cannot control anything external, only your reaction to the external. I think if I had subscribed to that process when I was younger, I'd be a lot further along. But I'm here, better late than never. So Jason, thank you so much for that response. And I think it's important what you said there, better late than never. You know, I think what you're teaching your kids is that no matter what stage you're in in your life, it's never too late to grow and learn and become a better person. That's such an important lesson. Because I think that too many people stop learning and growing as soon as they get out of college. And that is a sad way to live life. You know, no matter what stage you're in in your life, if you decide that the way you're living is not the best possible way to live, it's the perfect time for you to change. So above all else, I think that you're setting a great example for your kids of somebody who is always willing to learn and grow. And I love that. So thank you for sharing that. And next we had a response from Romina who said, Teach them about the nature of death and how everyone is mortal. Try to live a thoughtful life and never take parenthood for granted. Be an example of stoic values, but one that they can find to upgrade and make better. So, Romina, thank you so much for that answer. I think it's a good point to allow your kids to upgrade and make your example better. It's like what we've heard earlier. You always want your children to be better than you are, to have a better life than you do. And, uh, you know, nobody's perfect. So try to be as good as you possibly can. Try to be the best example, but allow your kids to be an even better example to you. So I think that's awesome. Thank you. And next we had an answer from Gunnar who said, As a parent, I try to resist assenting to anger. Every parent knows that no matter how much we love our children, they can cause anger and frustration with the things that they do. I try to incorporate this resistance to anger with the old golden rule. When I feel anger or irritation starting to set in with them, I try to remember that lashing out or giving them some impatient response isn't how I'd like to be treated. This way I can remember to treat them the way that I would like to be treated. They deserve a calm, rational parent that can show them kindness and understanding. So Gunnar, thank you so much for that response. I think it's an important point that you make to try and put yourself in your kids' shoes and see how you would like to be treated if you were them. And, you know, I kind of have this this story in the back of my mind. Somebody said once, uh, I think it was a podcast I was listening to. In fact, I think it was a comedian, Bill Burr. But uh, he basically said, you know, if a kid was to lose their balloon and it floats off into the sky... To give you an example of what that would be like in your situation, let's say that your wallet was attached to a string and it was full of helium or something like that and all of a sudden you let go and your wallet just started floating up into the sky. To you, that would be horrifying. You'd probably be so angry and and you'd be so annoyed that you let go of this wallet and now it's gone. That was so important to you. Well, that's how the kid felt with the balloon. To them, the balloon was the most important thing to them right now. And to see it float up into the sky was horrifying. So, you know, if you can put yourself in their position, in in, in the kid's position, you could sort of understand why they would be crying so much or why they're so upset, you know? So I think that that's a really great point to bring up. Put yourself in the kid's shoes. And our final answer comes from Mark, who said, Stoicism has improved my parenting in at least two ways. First, I try to model good behavior. For example, instead of judging someone in front of my child, like saying this person is rich and that is good or that person is poor and that is bad, I try to emphasize that what's important is for a rich person to do good with their money or for a poor person to not let lack of money hurt their character. And the second way that Stoicism has improved my parenting is when I consider how fleeting life is. I try to cherish every moment with my child, and I trust that that too is modeling how I think that they will in turn treat others. So Mark, thank you so much for that response, and I really appreciate the example that you gave there of not judging people based on what they have, but how they use what they have. I think that that's so important for children, and it's focusing on what's important, what what actually matters in life, and I love that. So thank you so much for sharing that answer. And again, I want to thank all of you who have responded to this question this week, and I really appreciate the input that you're all having into these Wednesday podcasts. You know, I just think that it's so helpful to hear from everybody in the community about these wonderful principles that you're actually implementing into your life and using every single day. 
Because in the end, that's what the goal of this podcast is. And that's the goal of Stoicism, to take principles and use them to make your life better. And I'm so excited every time I see somebody respond to one of these questions. Because that means that they're using Stoicism for what it was intended to be used for, to make your life better. I love it. And, you know, I hope that all of you parents out there have got some great advice from everybody in the community today. And for those of you who want kids, I know that this advice will be helpful down the line. So please keep this podcast and, uh, and you know, use these principles when you get there because it's so important to really be the best parent that you can possibly be. And I know that when I become a parent, I will absolutely want to use the principles of Stoicism to give my kids the best chance of being their best possible versions of themselves that I can give them, if that made any sense at all. So anyway, I will talk to you guys next time with our interview on Friday, which is with Danny Vega. And uh, until then, I hope that this episode has helped you on your rise to the good life. Ciao. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Practical Stoic Podcast. I hope that you've gotten a lot of value out of it, and I hope that it helps you to live a better life. If you have enjoyed the podcast, then don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be the first to know when there are new episodes. If you really love the podcast, then I would appreciate a positive review, whether that's on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever else you listen. Don't forget that if you're interested in one-on-one stoic coaching, then you can head to risetothegoodlife.com forward slash coaching to book your first free session today.